but I've been thinking about you a lot lately because uh, right now I'm training for a marathon and like on those, I haven't done any ultras. I haven't done a marathon yeah. before the first one. And I know my last run was my longest. It was a three hour run. Well, if Harvey can pull these all nighters and run these ridiculous events, then I can get up over this hill. So uh, you've been kind of motivating me lately and I'm just excited to have you on and talk to you. Man, so, thanks, Tyler. It's uh, you know, really nice to connect, and that's inspiration for me to hear. When, when is your race? It's uh, May 19th. That's that's really neat. That's really neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, and, and I think after that three three hour run, like I feel like I can conquer it now. I think my pace is decent enough that I'll be able to get sub four hours, which was the target. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I always say, uh, like, for your first marathon, it, it is most important to, like, just savor the experience. And, like, your ultimate goal is to finish and be proud of finishing no matter what your time is. So, like, uh, it's kind of nice to have a general idea where you may want to pace for. But if you finish in, like, four hours and 20 minutes or you finish in five hours and whatever minutes or you finish in like you know 15 minutes faster than your goal initially whatever that might be is the bigger picture is like the uh that you achieve like going the distance yeah and having fun with the experience and then then it's fun to come back at the the next one the one after that and then you try to like improve off of those like having a a mark to improve from it yeah. really helps it's been a bucket list goal of mine. So I'm finally like, I'm excited that I'm finally doing it. And I, I haven't really, I haven't trained towards a, like a physical goal since high school really. And, and that's been uh, like 15 years. So it's, it's like, I've always kept in shape, but it's, it's like really nice to push myself. Um, mm. Yeah. But uh, Judd, you, you ran like, did you run two marathons now or was it that one? Which well, I've I've got a few under my belt yeah. now, but yeah, I, I jumped from a marathon to an ultra. Like <laughs> it was pretty funny. Like he he saw he was on a plane, uh, and he saw the Marathon de Sables uh, documentary, and he's like, I want to do that. So then you just signed up for the marathon, sort of spontaneously. Yeah, you did the marathon, and then like your next race was Marathon de Sables. Like that was <laughs> nice. And that's how it works sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Now that was not my route. My route was much more. It took longer to, to get to that point. But hey, we all have different ways of you know experiencing it. But it's exciting. I think that that yeah, you know, the marathon can be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, since since you kind of introduced Judd, like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and who you are to to Harvey here? Well, uh, just a. Uh, friend of Harvey's like you said we met uh eight years ago uh in Africa and that's cool you know I ran a little in high school and then gave it a break for several years but was competitive tried to be competitive in some bicycle racing and whatnot and then uh was uh in a adult ice hockey league and got injured and decided well I'm probably not gonna do the rehab so Asked physical therapist something. I said, would running be good and shoulder injury? He said, yeah, that natural movement. So I remember going out the next day and sure. and trying to run two miles and my legs gave out. And four months after that, I was running a marathon. So, I mean, it's, you know, a, that's pretty neat. Kind yeah, of, really you neat. know, the background is as far as athletics go. And I've tried to do some ultra distance events and other things other than just running, cycling and inline skating and whatnot and now you're you're what you just continued your relationship and now you do like crew crew work for for harvey on his longer events yeah does so uh you know key aspect period like yeah absolutely we, we've got a good good bond a good fit you know i, I uh I only crew for Harvey and, and, and I really don't pay attention to a lot of these other races. And I just really focus on the ones that he's doing. And usually when I get to the races, everybody's asking me questions about, <laughs> well, have you ever run this race? Or what about Harvey? Has he ever thought about running this race? And I just try to stay focused on what we're, what we're working on for, you know, that loop 
um, mm -hmm. whether that be in a bigs or or that two mile stretch at uh, bad bad water. Just try to get him through that. Don't don't think you know what is it going to be thirty forty miles or or ten twenty hours from mm -hmm. now. So yeah, yeah. I I definitely want to I want to continue pulling on this because like you know you're there's probably a lot of insight that you can provide watching from the sidelines and, and helping that much on these insane events. But let me, let me start off just by just kind of telling a little story. Uh, so honestly, I would say three months ago, I didn't even know that there were people out here doing these ultra marathon runners or runnings. Um, I kind of decided that I was going to start this podcast and the whole premise of it is, is just to have people on that live, uh, you've probably heard the, the term type two fun. We call it high quality fun. Uh, find people that live these like exciting, interesting lives that, or like do events that are, uh, challenging, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and then I decided to sign up for this, this marathon. So I'm having awesome. guests on that. I have like my buddy on who does marathons. And then I find, uh, uh, what Kaylee, I think you've actually met her. I think you have a photo with her online. Yeah. Uh, Kaylee Frederick. Yeah. Um, and I interviewed her cause she did the bad water. I was like, that event sounds insane. Like, that's great. And then, uh, you know, after a while I just, I DM'd you and you happen to say, yeah, let's, let's come on on. And then as I dug deeper, like to prepare for this interview, I just found that there's more and in, more insane events in this ultra community, like bad water running, running 135 miles through uh death Valley, like, wild and then like i just i learned about the berkeley which i think you you did this year and uh what in in doing research for you like i found out about these backyard marathons so like i'm it's fascinating someone who doesn't even necessarily want to run 100 miles it's just like so interesting to see what people are willing to put their bodies through to like test the limits and compete and some of this stuff um so like yeah that's kind of how i stumbled on you and like I guess one of the things I wanted to ask was what are some of the most insane races out there? Uh, you know, maybe ones you've done, maybe ones that you haven't and, and maybe ones that you're going to do. Uh, I just kind of want to hear about some of the interesting ones and like what makes them unique from other ultras. Yeah. Well, honestly, uh, there are, you know, there are races, a lot of races want to say they're the toughest races in the world. And I mean, there's a good couple handfuls that say that. And uh, really, they're all sort of right in their own way. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, you know, Barkley is the toughest trail race in the world. And, you know, are arguably, you know, in, in many ways, the toughest race to finish. Um, but uh, it's very difficult to finish because of the navigating or getting timed out. So it might not push someone to their ultimate limits because they get timed out before they could reach that point. Or, you know, bad water it could be the, the toughest race in the world for someone for like a, a, a road race that's in the hottest place. If it, they, or, or you could talk about the coldest races on the planet. There's a lot. Marathon de Sables was really interesting. And that's something that Judd and I both did. So like that race is, was 160 miles mm -hmm. in like, uh, five days or six days that some was, six days yeah, just like, yeah. Uh, but the sixth day was like uh the last day was only i think was it 10k or and 10 it was like 10k something yeah. like that so it's like the fourth day is the longer day and i felt like that was almost like 50 60, miles or I something think it's 60 or something something like that okay. and other days are somewhere like 23 miles mm -hmm. or 26 miles and it's a really fascinating race because um I mean, there were about 1300 people in it mm -hmm. i think and uh it, it requires you to be more self-sufficient because what's interesting is you have to carry all your food for the whole week from the very first mile so whatever you start with that's what you have to end with or that's what you have to get through unless you can convince someone in your tent to trade with you <laughs> like for some food like hey i got coca-cola here you give me like some of that, uh, you know, toilet paper, <laughs> toilet paper, or something like that. Right, right, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was. What was your favorite thing about the marathon, the Sovereigns? Uh, so you know, going into that, I didn't really have an expectation. I just wanted to finish, and and I told myself even before I got there, I was I was like, well, I'm probably not going to be 
become friends with any of these other seven individuals in, in my tent. You know, I'm just going to do my own thing. And and then here we are, however That's many amazing. years later, and I, I consider Harvey one of my best friends. And, yeah, and absolutely. you know, just I would have never met him had it not been yeah. for that. I probably would have read about him, but I wouldn't have been there alongside him to get to see all this stuff that I've been able to see unfold over the last several years. It was great. And it was fun because you sleep in a US tent with like, usually they group you by your, your countrymen or women. Uh, and we, I think we actually had like five Americans and then we had a Swede, Johan, who we actually saw last year at Badwater. Mm -hmm. He was coaching someone. And we, we had uh, another man from South Africa. And then there was someone else I feel in our tent that was from another country, perhaps. I can't remember off the top of my head for that. But yeah, it was that was kind of neat because it was you're not running the whole day. And uh, although I remember on day two, I got really dehydrated and I came back and I looked like I was just dying. And I mean, I had to like totally pull myself back from like the the abyss of like like being totally knocked out because I ran really hard and I uh, under uh, or overestimated like uh, myself in the in that heat and the, the effort that day. And um uh, it was a little harder to pull myself back to normal normalcy because we didn't have like, you know, I couldn't just go get Coca-Cola and more uh, cold electrolytes or ice. Like there's nothing like that. You have to drink like the warm water they give you. Yeah, <laughs> which is rationed. You're right. They give you uh, a liter and a half of water every yeah. six, eight miles. Yeah. So it, it that's an interesting race. Uh, you know, I, I it's kind of pricey, so I wouldn't do that race a lot. Um, but like, that was really a cool experience. Well, I don't know about you, but I plan on doing it again. Oh, you're gonna do it again? I'd love to do it again. I didn't know that. Well, maybe I may have to go oh, do that gosh. again with you too. Uh, maybe when I'm like, you know, maybe like when we're like 60 or something. Oh, I think I'm gonna do a 10 year anniversary. Yeah, I got years. two years. Oh, two two years. years. I didn't even know that, man. It was you. All right, learn something new tonight. I signed yourself up for another race already. Yeah, yeah and I, I just think it like now I want to do some research on that one because it's just like a whole different dynamic of adventure, right? Uh, I know you did the the what was it called? The backyard series where you're pretty much running a six mile loop every hour for uh, what until you until you drop uh, 4.67 uh, 4.167 miles. So it's just and add it up to 100 miles every 24 hours. So it's like six point some kilometers. But in terms of miles, it's 4.167 miles. And uh, yeah, you 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 do 100 miles every 24 hours. And it's like uh, 11 hours on the trail, 13 hours on the road. And you just keep on going. So uh, it definitely involves a lot of like strategy and uh determination and like just uh being really efficient with your uh energy as well as like like nutrition and i really advocate for like the plant-based nutrition like being super powerful and helpful for me to win the last two individual world championships because the dairy and the meat are, are they're they're slower to digest they also cause more inflammation so I, I feel like there is a true advantage for that in that race and it actually in life in general period. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, um, well, Oh, I actually, I was going to say that there's actually a ski race that's similar to that where, where I people, heard that. I, yeah. Is this the one in uh, New Hampshire or I, I'm not oh, sure I, where it's located, but I know like you cross or you hike up the top of the mountain yep. with your Skin skis up. on and ski down and you do that every hour until you drop. Um, so one of them was going to happen in I I think it was New Hampshire or I think it was New Hampshire this year at a, a ski resort that I work at a, a guy I know was signed up to do it and he had some issues like the week before and no, I know when he first told me about it I was like there's nobody that's going to last for more than 24 hours and I think I think they're up to like 60 hours in that amazing. ski race that's incredible yeah. it's it's cool there's just so many wild events out there and I. I, I'm having so much fun just getting to talk to people about them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's let's dive into your guys' dynamic then. Like, so you you met him at the race you just explained. It sounds like, and then you know, can start doing uh, 
crew work for him. I, I know that you have a whole team when you're doing these events because you, you probably come back to your, you know, you're either mid run or you come back to your home base between a lap or something and you just need people to kind of take care of you, hype you up, get you calories in before you're sent off for the next one. What, what all does that involve? And like, what are you seeing from the sidelines while you're doing all this? Well, it, it depends on the race. Like uh, for Badwater, I have four crew members for like maybe a race like uh, long haul when I was down there. I happen to have, you know, maybe I only have one crew member, like maybe Kelly or my friend Dave Oakley. Um, and then for for bigs, like I only have one one man and that's that's Judd. Uh, we did have exception this year because Judd was working like uh, with DJing like the first two days and my friend Randy, he was able to come and, and he had a dentist appointment uh, like early in the week. So he, he went the first two days and then Judd came from like no sleep from doing the DJing and came in and, and, and uh, was was part of the race after that. But yeah, usually I only have Judd because that's what the rules stipulate. So it depends on the particular race. Laz likes to limit this crew size because he doesn't want to have like massive amount of people there, but it's really critical because uh, if I'm going for my absolute furthest distance in like the backyard, if I were to like be expending energy to like mix up my tailwind drink mm. or get my Newtons uh, ready to like run with, uh, search for my two 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 times U gear, is like that would take uh, additional energy every lap that that would cause me to not be able to go as far because i i have judd like i'm able to put my feet up and focus just on like eating and like thinking about what i need to do to execute the next lap so yeah I don't know. and you've done judd's a master like these people come to the race and they will come and they will take photos of like what he's doing they're like he comes up with all sorts of creative things like the hangers you use in the in the crew tent so that you can like it's like a clear hanger used for like uh was it shoes shoe hanger? yeah like a shoe organizer to organize everything from headlamps to batteries charging cables yeah you know scissors zip ties duct tape whatever it just makes it you three-dimensional know. so you can see it and joe was the first one to do that and now i think almost everybody has one <laughs> so it's uh it's true you've come up with some creative stuff yeah when you're stuck there for four days five days you you start to make notes every every couple hours you know and 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 i mean it, it's evolved and most of that stuff stays in organizer bins till it's time for another race but uh you know usually i'm not having to ask anybody do you have an extra so-and-so it's people are coming asking us if we have something very nice very nice and i guess what are what's going on while he's out running uh are you just working with other people getting your relaxation in or are you prepping for the next lap so i you know on that that particular race you have about you have about uh 50 minutes just depending on what he's running uh time wise because you see him every hour yep. um so you're concentrating on a lot of times harvey's giving you input about you know I would like this drink this time or or hey how about some how about some warm food this time you know harvey doesn't eat junk food the other 51 weeks out of the year but you know there might be some potato chips but it's like <laughs> i'd like the barbecue potato chips or whatever and just you know dry just just keeping like the clothes dry because i mean he goes through a, a lot of clothes but every time it's like for me it's kind of a routine i you know i see a lot of people getting their drinks ready harvey usually carries a couple bottles they'll go ahead and put ice in their drinks and then 40 minutes later that ice is now all melted and whatever electrolyte drink is now watered down whatever and and harvey like i said i have a routine like that's one of the last things i do before harvey comes in and and you know again he usually offers some feedback every time or if i sense something that i think is going on you know i'll try to give him a little pep talk or whatever but or how about we do this next lap and yeah 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 so again i think we work well together um he's super positive the whole time even okay, even so. he's in some rough patches <laughs> he's just like oh thank you so much and you know i've just never i've never worked with anybody that's that's that positive all the time and i mean this this might be on 72 hours no sleep and he's still just 
he's still just the Harvey. And and people ask me all the time. They're like, is that really how he is all the time? I'm like, that's really how he is all the time. It's really, well, it, it's easy with Judd. I mean, Judd's got a very uh, calm disposition. And that's like really for me to have a crew member. That's like a uh, central key ingredient is like there, being someone who's like uh, just a calm individual that like doesn't get 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 like worked up from like anything happening you know but also judd goes way above and beyond that because he's also very like creative like he's a problem solver i mean it was like two years ago before barkley it was like five minutes before the start of race and one of my poles had no hand like uh like no or whatever you call it like what do you call it? A little tether, tether, whatever. And he's like, uh, oh, no problem. Let me just whip this up. So he's like using the burner on the stove to like singe it together. <laughs> and it's still working to this day, which you create is pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, you always come up with some creative stuff and problem solving. And also you really have like, a, you, you, you're you able to like uh, say, uh, say really the right things at the right time. I mean, you got like a really good mindset. You don't let the, your your mental side stay strong. You're able to see through the 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 uh, your possible holes in in like the armor for the uh, component the, the competitors in some of these races. Yet, yeah. right? But uh, no, it's a lot of fun, and we have a lot of fun with the other runners and other teams as well. It's like there's a lot of positive camaraderie in these ultras. Yeah, I was a. Uh, this might be a decent transition. I wanted to. I wanted to ask you about like, you. You have this like positive energy about running and and life, and you can do these crazy events where you get no sleep. I'm I'm curious how that how those skills that you've built up through th through like ultra running it actually transfers into your, I don't know, your relationship, your day to day. Like, mm -hmm. can you? Do you even get tired anymore? Do you just like get two hours of sleep and run off no, to the office? And no, yeah, I do get tired, but I I do uh, have a lot of energy. Um, but I do have like a routine. Like I like to take really good care of my body. So because of that, I'm not you know I like don't like to always burn the 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 candle at both ends. Like I definitely like to to aim most nights to get like seven hours of sleep. Um, but I also am, you know, very active. Like I'll go, you know, run a bazillion miles and do like, you know, my teaching day and I'll work on writing and I'll work on like, uh, you know, maybe I go do yoga and then I'll do something else like, uh, you know, so I have a very active like days. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the ultra running, uh, it's kind of like a lifestyle. So it, it like, um, it it causes me to just think about taking good care of my health um and i like it, that, that it transfers over to teaching um it, i struggle sometimes like everyone um you know i have my days that are rough and have my days where i really want to make a more positive impact with the student i don't know i get to an impasse and i don't know how to like uh to to get beyond it like i keep trying different ways um but it, the ultra running kind of gives you a, 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 a maybe like an added layer of, of perseverance and maybe you know i mean that you can get develop that in many areas in life um but it definitely helps it in with teaching that 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 benefits it because i i just am, am pretty relentless with trying with students again and again and again to try to find what works and uh yeah, um, you know, so that I'd say, and I, I run back and forth to work every day. So it, it and I also like uh, talk about health a lot with my students, even though I teach government financial literacy. Like every Tuesday, we start class with like uh, Tuesday health tip, and like so I talk about everything under the sun with like personal health. <laughs> That's great. I I know that when like when i do a workout in the morning maybe my hour run or whatever like getting that done first thing in the morning just is like i feel like i'm, I'm on top of the world uh oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. just sets up the rest of your day um and like not to sound cocky but i always feel like i'm i, I already worked out today like you're just getting up you're you're brushing off the mm -hmm. cobweb start your day like i i just feel so confident and ready to take on everything um so yeah i, I think that's incredible that what you've been running to work many miles away for how long now 
Uh, now it's like uh, almost 11 years. So at the finish the next month, it'll be 11 years or about a month from away from 11 years. Run community every day. That's so, wild. Uh, man, a couple of times where I've canoed or swam, <laughs> uh, well, hobbled, <laughs> but most most 99%, 100% of time under human power, 99% of time running, a few times doing other things like snowshoeing in the snow. That's but, really cool. That's really cool. Well, I know you have to run in a few minutes. So like, is there anything else that you want to get into or you feel like you want to share based on what we talked about? John, anything you, anything you think of? No, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in hearing about how you're going to do here in a few weeks. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's uh, definitely uh, going to be real neat experiences. Is, is your, uh, now you said you're married? Yeah, yeah I got married. Is, I got so two, two kids under three. That's amazing. So is your wife coming out to the race? Yep, or we're going to bring the whole family, you know, oh, bless that's very so good. Nice. Hopefully she can uh, handle the kids while uh, while I'm out running and uh, yeah. my support system. Yeah, it's so good. Make sure you 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 keep with the hydrating uh, along the course and start like from mile two, even if you're just drinking a little bit, because it really matters. And also like if the temperature in, in that point in May in michigan can be all over the place it could be like 40 degrees or it could be 80 degrees so right, definitely yeah. like you know adjust yourself for the temperature if it's really warm start slower you know like go for a little bit slower pace uh it could be nice like you know whatever you've been doing but like uh getting some electrolytes into your system like the gatorade maybe every they are or whatever they offer on the course like whatever electrolyte drink they offer taking that in every two to three miles would be nice even like a little sip or you could do like the gels every five miles but it will really help you a lot okay yeah and i just looked it up it's called the armed services marathon and it's in grand haven which is That's great pretty i'm excited mm -hmm. um well thank you i really appreciate yeah. you taking the time to come on um do you want to give any shout outs or uh you know where people can find you i yeah definitely uh well you i'm on uh social media uh as harvey lewis ultra runner so you can pretty much find me on any any channel although i'd uh more more prolific on like instagram and like facebook i do, do more there and then my partner kelly and i we've started a youtube channel uh living ultra with harvey and kelly so we post a lot of like uh training and and other like types of materials on there from r races we've done uh and uh yeah so that's kind of fun uh but uh definitely uh great to connect with you tyler and, and go get it yeah, thank, yeah thanks a lot uh and i'll put all that in the show notes um harvey right. bud, great to meet you and nice to meet you the rest of your evening and, right. it's a pleasure man and uh you, uh if you wish tag me on the your finish of your your marathon so i can see and and uh congratulate you and uh, i can't wait to see all right, perfect. Yeah, man. Go get it. Thank you for listening to the High Quality Fun Podcast. If you guys enjoyed this show, please give us a follow. And if you have a good story or just want to say hi, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram or YouTube. Thanks for listening.